Greetings folks, Carlos here. Uh, just a heads up, this episode was recorded on September 12th. This comes before some big announcements like what was revealed at the latest uh, PlayStation 5 showcase, including Final Fantasy 16. It also comes before the news on the morning of September 21st when we learned that Microsoft has acquired ZeniMax, aka Bethesda, and other big name game studios. We will talk about that next episode. Until then, enjoy. Spoilers and offensive content to come. Oh. Yeah, that pretty much describes 2020 to a T. Oh. Yep. Well, here we are again. <laughs> Another episode of this podcast where two fat guys talk, I guess. Episode 123. Hey. Whoop the Fucking do! Hey, Dave. Hey, Carlos. How you doing? Yeah. Me too. Me too. Did you watch the Ubisoft thing? No, I skipped that because I knew there was only going to be one game I cared about. And I may have been wrong by one, but it was close enough. Are you talking about the Scott Pilgrim re-release slash make slash release? No, but as much as I... I own that for 360. Mm -hmm. I haven't played it since the last time I played it back when it came out. Because it's not a great game. No. Boring. Uh, I don't know why anyone likes it. It looks good. There's a way to do a side-scrolling beat-em-up right. It has to be engaging and fun. River City Girls was engaging and fun. Uh, Streets of Rage 4 is engaging and fun. Even with my issues with Double Dragon Neon, the way the combat system goes, if you play that with a friend, it's engaging and fun. Mm -hmm. Scott Pilgrim is just a boring beat-em-up with video game references in it. Like, I love how Scott Pilgrim looks, because I also like the guys who, who, who made it. It's visually gorgeous. It's visually gorgeous. I love... Everything happening there. Unfortunately, the combat just is not fun to get through. The bosses, the bosses are the most interesting thing in the level, and even then, they're then they're boring. Yeah, the bosses are like mostly just another generic enemy who occasionally does a cool thing you need to react to. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful game that is just a trash to play. I again, I don't see why I got so much love. Well, but here's the thing. We may not like it. Mm -hmm. Other people did. That's sure. fine. Sure. What isn't cool is the fact that this game disappeared for over seven years. Oh, I know. It's, and it's... Th th this is where the video game archive group is actually petitioning for greater leeway for canceled MMOs to have an archive of these games at work. Have we talked about... Video game and fiction and art archival and the people fighting against it. I don't think at any length, or if we did, it was a small part of some episode a long time ago. Okay, in the past, I have sung the praises of one author named Chuck Wendig. Uh, because uh, I liked a couple of the books of his that I read. They were good. Uh, allow me to um, pull any and all support. He's a piece of shit. First of all, he's a liberal shill. Uh, and secondly... He is one of the driving forces behind attempting to sue this one archival... I forget the name of them. You're, but ta you're talking the um, the book archival... Yeah, uh, attempting to sue them so that they can make books basically like software licenses so that people never own their materials and that they can't be archived without their permission and them getting insane royalties. This... Uh, Peter Coffin is someone I listen to a lot, and he's fond of saying that shit that happens in video games, keep an eye on that, because that's the kind of shit other things will copy from. Mm -hmm. And video games attempting to take away your ownership of things and granting you licenses is now what these fuckwits want to do with books. Uh, so Chuck Wendig's a piece of shit for doing that, but that leads to the conversation about video game archival. You are absolutely right. No game should vanish, including MMOs. I think it should... It should be like a law that once a company is... Should I have stopped to let you open your bottle of pristine so you can pour yourself another 
cup of pristine Schweppes. You could have the most beautiful cup and you're getting the most beautiful fucking like carbonation that looks like, you, you know how sometimes you get like a clear cup of beer. I don't even drink beer, but it's got the bubbles and it's mm-hmm. just perfect. That looks like that. <laughs> you have like, the most perfect cup. I had to interrupt my entire thought process. Talk about your stupid plastic Schweppes cup of fucking ginger ale, which looks pristine and amazing. So Chuck one thing's piece of shit. And the whole in- <laughs> game archival thing, you're absolutely right. Uh, after an MMO's lifespan is done, people should be allowed to take the source code and make their own servers for it. People should be, yeah, that should be allowed to be archived. Video games need to be archived. You shouldn't be, companies shouldn't be allowed to do the Marvel versus Capcom thing where until they figure out their deals, all that stuff comes off digital stores. Absolute garbage. It's just another facet of capitalism that keeps us from preserving our art and our history. Yeah, and again, Scott Pilgrim was one of those ones, much like The Simpsons keeps on jumping in and out of the arcade game. Mm -hmm. Or like the um, Alien vs. Predator um, side-scroller. Yeah, Capcoms. Yeah. It just, these games keep on disappearing and almost reappearing every so often because, you know, they want more money kind of thing. But the archive group that's trying to do do these things is getting a lot of pushback from developers. Because if the developer wants a game to disappear... We should, we should clarify. The publisher. Publisher, yes. Yes. Developers are, for the most part, working class schlubs like us. True. Whereas publishers tend to be ruling class assholes. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, what we're seeing is the, conti- uh, the video game equivalent... Of the Disney Bolt. I hate that. Even Disney realized how stupid that was. For, to an extent. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Nintendo is only going to be selling some of these new Mario anniversary things until March 31st. Better get them then and shore up their fiscal year financial outlook. That's basically it. And we're not even getting really good new versions of it. They're not really adding a hell of a lot. We're getting a expansion to the 3D World game. Yeah, that's that, pretty cool. But that's being sold on its own. Uh huh. But the actual collection, we're getting a little bit of an up-res, and that's barely an up-res. Well, no, 3D World includes this Bowser's Fury thing. Yes, but that's not part of the collection. No, the collection is uh, Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy. Which Mario 64 is not even getting all the stuff that was in the, in the 3DS release. Uh, they never do, which makes me so mad. Like, when there was when they tried to re-release Mario All-Stars for Wii and make you buy full price for it, mm-hmm. they should have included all that extra stuff. I would have bought it then. But no, it was just a Super Nintendo game on the Wii. I'm surprised that they just put Mario All-Stars on the SNES collection on Nintendo Online. It's been great. I've actually been playing it because the Mario All-Stars collection is great. I mm-hmm. love it. But I, I they should have all that extra shit. You're absolutely right. I wasn't surprised they didn't include the um, Mar- Mario 3D or Mario World on well, it. Well, in fairness, if you have Nintendo Switch Online, you can just go play Mario World. Yeah, but wasn't the Mario World for that also um, upgraded a, a little bit as well? It had one di- big difference, and that's that Luigi had a slightly different sprite. Oh, okay. No one cares about Luigi, so we can just move on. Okay. All right, Dave. The real the real question is, why the fuck isn't Mario Galaxy 2 in that 3D Ages collection? Yeah. They want people to f- try and forget that it exists. Because, look, the stages were tighter. Tighter level design. The, shittier post-game. The second, shittier story. The second player being able to help was a billion times better. In part two, uh-huh. you could actually play through that game with two players, and the second player could have fun other than just, ooh, I'm collecting star piece thing, whatever. Star bits. Star bits. Thank you. There's no reason not to have that game in there other than Nintendo being lazy. I'm also not a fan of needing the motion controls. I argued Mario Galaxy was one of the few reasons to have motion controls. But even now, I'd rather just play it on a pro controller and not have to do anything with that cursor. The days of me defending motion controls for Nintendo and their games disappeared around the days of Skyward Sword. Because that game did not need motion controls. It, Even with their the, the special one they, they brought out for it that was 
more precise, supposedly, it still was not good. So I'm waiting for the for the day, and it's going to come probably in the next six months, that they're going to release Skyward Sword on Switch. And I don't think it's going to sell very well. You think they're going to enforce the motion controls again? No. Because they're doing it for Galaxy. No, they're not. Yes, they are. You absolutely have to either play in handheld mode and use the touch screen to control the cursor, or what? you have to have the Joy-Cons brought out if you're going to play it on a TV. You, I... can't, you can play it with a Pro Controller, yeah. but you still have to move it to move the cursor, because the Pro Controller has a gyro on it. They try to push this as well. I sing the praises about the Doom collection, Doom games on uh, Doom 1 and 2 on the Switch, but every new patch, they turn back on the fucking motion control, and I have to turn that shit off. So I can play the game right. That said, if I gave a shit about Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine, which I don't, that would be a great way to play them. Uh, counterpoint to that, there was like a full open GL Mario 64 that Nintendo yeah. uh, attempted to remove from the internet. So why wouldn't I just play it that way? Yeah. Especially okay. if they added the, the 3DS stuff. Now, what do, we, what do we need to use the motion, the motion controls for for that? So, controlling the cursor, although in handheld mode you can use the touch screen apparently, which sounds like all kinds of awkward. You need to shake to make Mario spin. Yeah, those. But what did, what did you need the actual the cursor po- the, for? You needed to collect star bits and player two to freeze enemies and shoot at them. And player one could shoot at them too. Okay, but we've... Shaking the controller, we've done that before for other... Didn't we have to do that for, um... Well, in Mario Odyssey, you had to. Yeah. It's one of the big reasons I didn't really care to play that game. I just also didn't give a shit. Look, I know everyone and their mother loves Mario Odyssey. I just don't give a shit. That's fine. Um, I played about two and a half, three hours into it, and I was like, okay, I wish I was playing Mario 3D World. Odyssey was okay. I mean, it had an interesting premise. Some of the worlds were neat, but I got bored. It's like what happens with most Mario games. It's great when you start, and then you just like, I'm bored. I think Mar- we owe the Mario series a lot. Mm-hmm. We owe the Mario series a ton, and so they remain some of my favorite games. I'm having a blast going through All Stars again, and going through 3D World properly is going to be fun uh, because I never really gave it a fair shake on the Wii U. That said, Mario games aren't the be all end all. They're not always going to be great. People have made entire videos of why criticisms of Mario games are invalid, other than and these people aren't called Movie Bob, funny enough. And they're just so cringy because they're games like every other game, man. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm gonna look at a Mario game and think to myself, this is dull, I want to play a Mega Man or a Doom or uh Immortals, Phoenix Rising. The latest Breath of the Wild love letter from Ubisoft that they are hoping mm. people will use to forget their rampant abuses. Of, they're, they're, they're their first homage to Breath of the Wild, actually. Yeah, love letter. Did I say latest? Yes. Uh, well, when it comes to Ubisoft, this is their first attempt at this. Mm-hmm. So I would say their first love letter to it would probably be more better rather than the latest because they haven't really tried to copy Breath of the Wild. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. This game looks interesting. I actually really like what I've seen yeah. of Immortals Phoenix Rising. It looks like if Nintendo ma- ma- mostly finished Breath of the Wild and then decided, let's make this a Kid Icarus game instead. Yeah. Because Phoenix, uh, she reminds me a lot of Pit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's some Breath of the Wild influences. Obviously, the color scheme and the mm-hmm. op- vastness the of style. the open world. Finding bosses in the overworld, going down into the space shrines. <laughs> Definitely a lot of Breath of the Wild. But hey, I fucking like Breath of the Wild. If Genshin Impact can be a shameless plug that I to- a shameless copy that I want to play, I'll fucking play this. Well, and and that's just it. Is they got a lot of hate when they first showed their first trailer for for the game. Back when it was called Gods and Monsters. Yeah. And I was like, why not? I mean, it's a Greek themed kind of mythological monster fighting game. Why not? Oh, it looks like Breath of the Wild. So what? It's an art style. I will say this: it. I didn't give two shits about it before. Mm-hmm. I really give a shit about it now. It's the. It, it's actually the first interesting new idea, even though it's a copy in it in, in a little bit, out of Ubisoft in years. There's something fresh about it. There's yes. something really neat and cool about it. Ubisoft 
went to one of their internal studios and said, here's some money, make something new. Yeah. They looked at Breath of the Wild and said, what if we did that but with Greek themes? And a girl pit. And a female main character. Absolutely. And you can actually customize a little bit. Which is great. Character customization without microtransactions. Agreed. Is a good thing. This allows you to customize and make the character your own. Which is why I agree so much with um, Jim Sterling on YouTube that microtransactions for cosmetics, you can try and explain away as it's just cosmetics. But these are still preventing people from making the characters they want and making them closer to their characters in the game. I used to argue that uh, cosmetics for money was a lot more moral than gameplay advantages for money. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've come around. He's absolutely right. And uh, it's still it's still ugly and gross. In-game unlockables being cosmetic and not needing to affect your gameplay, I still will argue is fine, like when Halo Reach did. Sure. Sure. Uh, absolutely. Having me have to work towards a challenge in the game to unlock cosmetic, that's what we used to call in-game unlockables. You don't get those very much anymore. You, you, today, you spend $10 on a season pass for a single character so you can grind away to try and get their cosmetics. Avengers. But, no, I mean, that that, that was a good thing out of Ubisoft. I, again, I didn't... I've watched the trailer now, and it, it, it looks great, and I will probably buy that, even though I hate Ubisoft's launcher so very much. I <laughs> I must admit something to you, Dave. Eh. And you're not going to like me for this. Eh. I looked up porn of Phoenix that same day. Of course you did. And I found nothing. That's unusual. That's weird. I mean, within two hours of poke of the, the last Pokemon Switch game being announced, perverts had made porn and of the fan, last character yeah. and fan service of the character in the trailers yeah. for the new Switch game. Uh, within hours of that really bad Sonic RPG for DS being announced, and them introducing that new female echidna character, mm. there was porn of her. Her name was Shade. People are just. But I looked at Phoenix, and my first thought, because I'm a progressive man, is, shit, I want to see them titties. And I didn't find them titties, Dave. You're, you're, you're bringing the show down, man. Speaking of titties. Oh my god. Did you see the latest trailer for Crash Bandicoot 4 and the latest and final playable character? No, I didn't. The latest and final, final playable character is another Timelines version of Tana Bandicoot. Nah. And she's like a Drake's Fortune style kind of adventure. I'm gonna I'm gonna let the Bandicoot out of the bag in this on this one. Uh huh. I don't care. You're not looking forward to Crash Four. I will care when the game's out. All I gotta say, speaking of titty, is that she appears to have the titty that Coco lost. I'm not I, in a good I, mood today, Dave. I let me have this. I apologize for Carlos. I don't. I, have, I am not sorry. I have reached peak don't give a shit about the giant influx of news and everything else about games that aren't coming out for months and months and months, if not years. Okay. I, I, so, am, I am So we shouldn't be talking about stuff like E3 anymore, which is fine by no. me. <laughs> See ya, folks. Get back here. No, it's... I am appreciating more the, the kind of announcements like Nintendo just did with the Hyrule Warriors 2 Breath of the Wild prequel, where... <laughs> the title of that, by the way, is <laughs> Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. <laughs> Whatever. Hyrule, World, Hyrule Warriors 2 sequel Breath of the Wild. You know what? That, that, you got the better title. You yes, got the better I title. I know. And, and them saying, by the way, it's out in November. We didn't know this game existed before a couple days ago, but holy fuck, it's out in th less than three months. I think Hyrule Warriors is actually a smart way to do it. Yeah. Hyrule Warriors is Hyrule characters versus vast armies of enemies, and that's exactly what the prelude to Calamity Ganon was. Yeah. So it's a good vessel for it. And we're, we're going to have so much more character development 
in Hyrule Warriors than we will we had in Breath of the Wild. Now I still need to finish Breath of the Wild, but uh, it, like I mostly finished it, and then I put on the back burner to play other games. But I, it is going to get finished before the second game comes out. I promise. I'm still looking more forward to the second game than I am to this Hyrule Warriors, because uh, while I can't like the occasional Muso game. I still... The Zelda one didn't really do it for me. There's nothing wrong with it. It's actually one of the better Musou games. It just mm-hmm. didn't really capture me the way Dynasty Warriors Gundam did. Or from videos I've seen, I haven't yet touched that Dragon Warrior... Dragon Quest one did. Oh, the Dragon Quest ones were very well done. Yeah, that's what I hear. So... And there are certain franchises I wish it would get musou mm-hmm. I've been waiting for a Final Fantasy Musou forever. But... Uh, I this is one of those games that I wish well, but that I am gonna watch the story of for sure. Mm. See, and, and you know what? If one day you put it on, I'd play it with you. And that's kind of what I'm hoping is that they have a, a proper two player mode for it on Switch. Because my 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 version of Hyrule Warriors One was on the Wii U, mm-hmm. and that means I don't have characters that are in the later one or in the Switch version because I didn't buy the, the 3DS version as well to get Linkle and everything else. Um, by the way, fuck Nintendo on those ones. Yeah, Nintendo... Uh, look, there are things about Nintendo I love, but let's be honest. Uh, between the Mario limited selling thing and other shady practices, Nintendo has been doing a bunch of shady shit for years. And let's not... Let's not um, try and take attention away from their mobile bullshit. Ah, yes. A subscription to play a mobile game that's already freemium. Great. Well, not just one subscription. Multiple types of subscriptions. Right, right, that right. That each give different benefits at different times. Dave, I feel like this has been a real downer podcast so far. And I am all for it. Let's continue the downering. Again, I appreciate the fact that N- Nintendo is bringing out the Hyrule Warriors too. Yeah. I do... I can't wait to see the what they're going to actually change now that they've got the Switch hardware to work with. What I do worry about now that we've heard that they're bringing out... I'm going to take a step back. Okay, ste- we, step back. <laughs> we, we have heard reports now that Nintendo is telling um, devs that their games now must have the ability to go 4K and a bunch of other requirements showing that the rumored new Switch hardware is on the way. You have entered the Carlos Dave r- 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 rumors zone. <laughs> gonna put, gonna bring that to before I started t- saying that, or just no, no, I'm just, I'm gonna awkwardly leave it there and put an echo on it. I'm gonna put a b- 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 big a- 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 echo oh, on it. Anyway, so that is the current rumor right now: is that de- multiple devs have confirmed that they've been told by Nintendo that their games must have the ability to support 4K going forward. Yeah. And a couple of other things they haven't been willing to um, ad- admit to that Nintendo has said. Every game has to feature Luigi getting killed by the main <laughs> villain. I'd be okay at that. It already happened in Smash Brothers. <laughs> when death killed Luigi. He got better. He did get better. Yes. Luigi's great. But... If Nintendo is about to bring out the Switch 2.0, mm-hmm. number one, I'm hoping that they do it in such a way so that it won't relegate the Switch 1.0 to be basically crap, because that will piss off practically everybody. I wouldn't mind necessarily buying a more powerful Switch, but I don't want the games to start being Switch 2.0 only. Like they like started to happen in the later days of the 3ds, where it was just that much better on the new systems. You could play it, sure, but you were playing a inferior version because you didn't have the new stuff. I mean, that's kind of the iterative thing that Microsoft is doing with the Model X and Model S. Though the Model S is admittedly a really good option for the money you pay for it. I don't believe the hype. I'm, I'd am i never buy one because I want just a Windows computer. Mm-hmm. And if I had the money to burn, I'd just splurge on a Model X anyway. Or a Series X anyway. But I think there are a lot of people who are in a position where the Series S is absolutely perfect. And Microsoft 
needs to be given some kudos for that, I think. Yeah, but the System S is simply just the... It, it's not the new X system it cut is. down. It is. The, mod, the I, series, I, I, series S is the Series X, but scaled back a bit. Slightly less power, less resolution, but everything that plays on the X will play on this. See, that wasn't how I how I took the the press release. I took the press release as the, as the S was simply a, a, the next version of the Xbox One, just a little bit less powerful than the X. It's 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 part of the new series. That's why it has series letter after it. Um, I hate their lettering. It's so stupid. It could should be called the uh, they should have called it the Xbox 1080, uh, or whatever. The point is, yeah, there's probably going to be a new Switch model. I would love if there was some kind of upgrade kit I could just plug into my current Switch so I didn't have to transfer things over, like a 32X for my Switch. <laughs> but uh, those are the halcyon days of the past, long yeah. gone. Did you know that the um, Series S has actually been in their video releases for the last number of months? Nope. In the background on their on the his bookshelf, it's been there on the bookshelf for months. His bookshelf. Are you talking about Major Nelson or the <laughs> head of Microsoft? Whoever's been doing the press releases. Oh, well, I, don't, I don't. The head of Microsoft Games. I don't remember that guy's name. Yeah, he's who, the guy who was <clears> like, "Oh, we didn't mind giving banjo to Nintendo for Smash." That guy. Um, whoever it is, literally, it has been on his bookshelf in the background. Since like June or July. That's funny. Just sitting there with no one realizing what it was. That is super funny. That, I love shit like see, that. That's Nintendo levels of um sneaky. So now what what they don't realize is now that they know that Microsoft's willing to do that level of um marketing and hide stuff, now his whole house is gonna be totally analyzed. Every little Yeah, anytime, thing. I mean, anytime you see a Master Chief statue, you're gonna be looking at his hand to see if there's a smash invite in it. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't I don't mind stuff like that. But now I'm not buying an uh, Xbox Series X. There is you aren't going to buy an Xbox One either. And look at that thing. Okay, now in my defense, that was before Microsoft got back on the bandwagon for bringing all their games to PC. If I didn't known that Gears of War was coming to PC. I would have never bought that. I mean, my <laughs> my Xbox One collection contains Gears of War, the Rare Collection, that one game that was like Metroid or um like Metroid, but ended up not being as good. Shadow Complex. No, um, the cute robotics girl who um was on a plant having to fix all the. Different machines. Uh, let me just look over. Recore? Recore, thank you. Man, I remember that. That game looked cool. You could air dash. It looked cool, and mechanically it had some sound mechanics to it. It's just the game was kind of boring. That's the worst, isn't it? When a game is super cool, but the mechanics suck. Or when the mechanics are awesome, but there's nothing to do with them. Why didn't these games get married and produce offspring that is the best of all worlds? I'm going to sidetrack for a moment. Sidetrack. Um, we, I was gonna, this is a sidetrack. Side side we were talking earlier about a game that me and a, a friend was playing here recently. Ge playing. Generation Zero. Yeah. So there's a kind of a cult following the Generation Zero in the community. You know, you were talking about this game earlier. Keep talking. I want to actually look at this. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Generation Zero is a... It was a Kickstarter originally. Okay. And then it went to early access, and it has released now, and it's already had a DLC brought out for it. And it's got sound mechanics. The island, which basically um, kind of is meant to be like Sweden kind of thing in, in this world, is very, very nicely done. I mean, graphically... This game looks beautiful. Above that, in most worlds, when you're going into towns and farms and stuff like that, you don't really believe that anybody lived here. I mean, you might see some blood, you might see um, you know, some clothes left around and everything else, but nothing ever really feels lived in. 
I believe people lived in these houses and these farms and this world. It it feels lived in, which is why I'm so sad that we had to abandon uninstall. Because as much as the story we were getting from press releases that we were picking up, um, messages left on voice machines for, for loved ones, and even some kind of live military dispatches were getting us really interested because the idea is is that you were sailing around and then you had to abandon ship or something and you ended up on in Sweden or whatever they in I, Sweden and from moment one things just feel off no one's around vehicles are abandoned everything else I mean you're starting way way out and you start coming across these robots that are trying to kill you. I mean, the first ones look like dogs. And, like, the the mechanics in the game, early on, you barely have any weapons or ammo or anything else. I saw some screenshots, and there are some Metal Gear-looking motherfuckers oh, later. Oh, Metal Gear f- fuckers later on. Oh, God, yes. But, I mean, enemies have weak points. They have tactics they do. And... Mechanically, we were having lots of fun. We're just going into these into these houses. We're finding way more weapons that we would normally find in the real world, kinda. And as you start moving more and more inland, things are obviously getting worse. You you can see where there have been actual firefights and and things happening. And you're just getting the idea that things went downhill. Yeah. Um, very fast. I saw some screenshots. It's a very pretty game. It is. It, so, and, and we're playing three player. We go into these bunkers. You even actually see some of the um, old World War II bunkers that you can find in Sweden that they've sealed off. In Sweden. And it, it was just really fun. Be, but we realized after a while that the fun was coming from the fact that we were playing together in these situations. That's when we started to notice the problems. Number one, there wasn't enough story to keep us going. It was, it was more of like the breadcrumb to get you to the next next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. The side missions actually had, you know, people leaving messages for loved ones. You know, we've left supplies here kind of thing. And you have to kind of figure out where that place is based on monuments and stuff like that. And then the mid-boss style enemies started to pop up. And those are your Metal Gear Solid sort of guys. Your Excelsis and yes. Metal Gear Rays and your, shit. What we, what we called harvesters and tanks in the game. Mm-hmm. And three, the more players you have in a game, the more the game scales. So guys that I could take out myself, no problem, in one player start to become a little more of a hassle in two, and a real hassle in three, without using weak points. Mm-hmm. The harvesters and the tanks were... And when I say tank, I don't mean a literal tank, because that would be easy. No, you meant the, like, these, imagine the, Metal Gear Excelsis is an enemy. Exactly. Ah, I, I saw... And I, I mean, we're, we're talking lower body has a chain gun style thing on you. And if you get too far from them, they launch napalm rockets in swarm style. And these, these battles could take five, ten minutes for one. And we had one. That ended up having a second one come into the battle. That had a third one come into the battle. The fourth one, we were already, okay, the, what the fuck's going on here? Are they defending an area? Is this how the game's going to be from here on out? Kind of stuff. And that was the end of our night for, for that one. Start back up the next day, and a couple of them had respawned. So we just went around them. But we realized that doing the side missions was distracting us from maybe getting to the interesting part of the game we hoped. Mm-hmm. And then we just started beelining for each main storyline mission. And we never made it. We just we went four or five more missions in storyline-wise. We started to get torn apart by giant groups of enemies. And the, the, the weapons in this game are a, a kind of a loot system. So, like, you'd find the different weapons at one star. 
there were two star, three star, all the way up to experimental, which were six star. And that would increase the stats on it. Basically, one star was like a decrepit weapon. Two was, okay, it was kind of beat up a little bit, all the way up to pristine. One star is the kind of weapon Carlos will fight Excelsis with until he finally takes it down. Well, and it, it was neat how they showed it off for you, because if, if you had a one star, because there, there were attachments to guns. If you had a one star um, scope and you looked through the scope, you'd have cracks, you'd have deformities, everything else. As you got to three star, now things have cleared up and it's looks like a more pristine sort of thing. So it was neat how they had those details to show, kind of show you just kind of what condition your stuff was in, but it wasn't enough. And then you add on the weight system. Now, it was neat because ev every gun, whether it was a handgun or a bazooka, was two pounds. Two pounds. Two pound handguns, two, two pound bazooka. Yep. Um, ammo was actually weighted quite like real life ammo. The problem was was the, the the game had a loot system for doing some crafting and the like and you would be hurt running around these these buildings looting these boxes for for ammo you get all this junk and all of a sudden you can't run anymore mm -hmm. well in this game if you can't run you're dead very quickly in in combat especially against the big guys you've hunt, you've you've uh, hunted 25 million pounds of food you can only carry 25 back to your camp. Exactly. Or on trail wagon. Exactly. So I'm not against a weight system in games, but this was one mechanic that was definitely not welcome because it slowed down combat, it narrowed your choices, and we we decided to hit up Nexus mods to... We actually modded that out of the game. And for... A little bit, we actually had back a little bit of our enthusiasm because now we had more options. Now we weren't wasting literally minutes going back to safe houses and managing our equipment and everything else. It was just go, 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 let's go. And we were having some fun again. And I know for a fact that eventually you do find a bunch of survivors, a bunch of NPCs, because this world has none for the... 15, 20 hours that we played, you ran into absolutely no bodies, people, anything. Really, this world could have used some animals running around or just some bodies because the, the bodies were just missing. It needed something to show the human presence without necessarily having you interact with them. It needed a live person talking with you, even if it was just through the radio earlier on in the game to, I guess, lighten up and give you some interaction. It, it's the same problem that people had with um, Fallout 76, with its original take on the game. The only living thing you ever found in that game was an enemy. They never talked to you. It was... Humanity only talked to you through voice recordings. And that's the same problem this game has. This game really needed little enclaves of people, even if part of the storyline is that the, the enemy is coming closer and they get wiped out as you go along. At least it's something. Again, I know there's an enclave of humans that are alive in this game that you get to eventually, because months ago I watched a couple people on YouTube playing and they were there. But we had no idea how much further into the game that was. That I figured it was at least another 20 hours kind of thing, based on the guy's equipment that they were using. And we're just like, sorry, we're done. Yeah, it's a neat premise, but it sounds like it got too mired into open world nonsense, which is a formula that's hard to get right. That's why I don't like a lot of Bethesda games, even before everyone else started realizing what mm -hmm. I already knew. Um, why I like Breath of the Wild is because the open world is filled with life. Even the empty spots have something. E exactly, and... and... I remember not too long before we finally decided to, to stop and uninstall, but we're running, we're running between these two fields, and in North America, that's exactly the sort of place that you'd expect there to be a road in between two properties. Uh -huh. But of course, in Europe, you're more likely to have these little swaths of forests in between, and. Again, it was just one of those things that's like, this is so beautiful. Because 
as we're going north in this area, things are getting colder. We're getting snow. We're seeing frost in the ground. Fog effects are coming to affect them um, when it, when battle's happening. Not that it ever affected the fucking enemies. That that was one problem I did have with the game. Because you're fighting robots, they're too good at shooting. And we felt like we were we were glass cannons. Yeah, this is how it felt. The game needed a little bit more on the armor doing something versus literally you're the best armor you can do in the game near the end of the game is a five um percent reduction in damage that's the best you can do i mean it's like really fighting a robot like it, it, and that's just it i don't want to take away from that because that's what they were going for but on the other hand you've still got to make that build up throughout your game so you feel less like you're you, you need to feel like you're getting more powerful well it's also it also depends on the type of game. Part of the reason Gears of War can get away with the enemies shredding you to ribbons in seconds is because you're expected to use cover, and the game gives you cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, part of the reason that uh, I had another example lined up, and I just completely forgot it now. Uh, part of the reason the Japanese style shmup can get away with only letting you have one hit point of health is because you are faster and more agile, and you have a tinier hitbox than the enemies. So there has to be some give, right? Mm-hmm. But in this in this game, it never felt like yes, the higher starred stuff were more powerful. But we're we're talking if your bar was half full on the damage on a level uh, two star, it's now like maybe another centimeter on the three. Mm. We're not talking like really. They should have had actual numbers in damage numbers, like twenty five DPS, thirty DPS, that sort of stuff. Really, you're probably going from 25 to 27. Hmm. It's just that little bit extra might help in some combat. But, I mean, we were going down a lot to enemies. And that wasn't quite so fun. Yeah, I know. Probably we'll get a comment there. Get good. But anyway. Actually, I would welcome that. I'd welcome some heat. (laughs) Someone just come tell Dave, get fucking good, scrub. Maybe I'll do that just to to get the ball rolling. (laughs) But it, th- this is a sort of game that and we're seeing more of stuff like this where you get into the the, the beginning is really interesting because you don't know what you're actually into yet. The moment you start getting into the middle part of it, you realize, wait, there's nothing here. What's my what's my reason for for, for continuing here? Really? Like, I honestly think if I'd have played this game solo. I wouldn't have made it two hours in, because the fun was with friends. Kind of like how Double Dragon Neon is really best enjoyed with friends. Yes. So probably a better game solo than this. Yes, completely. Because even Neon, you had a reason to continue going. You had a opponent that was continually taunting you and doing other stuff. This game needed that. A villain to mock you and keep you going, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Well, it's too bad about that. It sounds like uh, there was a lot of love and passion put behind this project for it to fall flat. The ratings seem to be definitely mixed. Well, and that's just it, is we read... like I, I got the game as part of my Humble Bundle, so this didn't cost me any extra to jump into. My friend actually bought it to do so, but it was also down to like $12 on Steam, so it doesn't hurt, really. Uh-huh. But we understood that, you know, people were saying... The game's a bit of a slog. Um, there's not too much to it. Exploration tends to lead to nothing, etc. But we were still willing to, you know, frankly, people are assholes when it comes to reviews in a lot of cases. So you kind maybe they didn't like the sort of game. Maybe you will, sort of thing. So I mean, we we gave it a shot. We put in way more than he could get refunded. I mean, you can only get refunded in the first two hours. We put in almost 20. If you ask nicely, Steam will still do it, but it also depends on who you get. Uh, You know... I've I've asked nicely for some much older games, and they've done it. Oh, no, no, no. I once asked nicely for a game I played like 12 minutes of four years ago, and they actually gave me the credit. Ah, but that's different, though. It's two hour under two hours of gameplay time not two hours of since you bought it yeah but they'll usually there's usually a time limit to that too is there like, yeah. uh, i've only ever refunded one game before mm-hmm. 
and it was a VR title that just wasn't good. So I, I I'm not in the habit of, of doing stuff like that. But we he had we had put in to over t- just under twenty hours to just over twenty hours. So the thought of asking for a refund doesn't even come into mind for a twelve dollar game. Yeah, that's the other thing. I'm looking at the price of it and I'm like, this seems to be a very reasonably priced game for the idea. But I also get it for some people exploring that empty open world and feeling like the isolation of that is cathartic and soothing. So I also understand that that might not be boring to them. It'd be boring to me. This doesn't sound like my game. Yeah. But I mean, like, I also think that Samus Aran on a planet in Metroid has a feeling of isolation, but that's also partly because you're fighting alien monsters by yourself with no backup. So... Well, and... I mean, one of the big games that we play all the time is Borderlands, and uh, we meaning you and uh, your friend. Yes, uh, not me. I don't much care for Borderlands. Yeah, you're, you're not a Borderlands fan, but me, me and my group group of other friends that play online, we play Borderlands all the time. Yeah, uh-huh. and Borderlands Three is another game that I mean, I played it solo, but I find the game to be so much more enjoyable with a friend because you can back each other up, and you just have more fun. It's just the way it is. Some games are just better that way. River City Girls plays really well on your own, but it is so much better to go through that game. Mm-hmm. I've been through that game twice. One with uh, Poe, uh, with Kiki watching us fumble, and one with you, and I enjoyed both trips. Same thing here. I played with you, and I played with the friend I'm talking about yeah. on- online, and we both had just lots of fun. Tag teaming the enemies, and just having that dialogue and everything else is just great. Mm-hmm. It's just why I think that Playing two player in the new Battle Toads, you gotta play two player. I have seen videos of it, and it seems super cool. And the story, Matt McMuscles put it best: the story does what Duke Nukem should have done, with the Battle Toads coming back to a world that doesn't find them impressive anymore. That's brilliant. Yes, that's exactly what Duke Nukem should do. Mm-hmm. And I was watching the game, and I'm like, this seems like a decent game. What are people's problem with it, exactly? I watched a quickfire review off of Angry Joe's channel. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it... Shout out to Angry Joe. I still want to just get my lips all over that dick. <laughs> oh, sorry. Of other Joes. Angry Joe's pretty cute, too. Um, and they no longer have Dell doing that. It's um, their third person on the channel. Yeah, b- uh, the guy who they fusion dance into. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it was his first um, rapid fire review, but they had a segment there where the three of them were playing, and they went into the into the bike section, the first one, and their reaction to that segment where they just broke down and started laughing and just kept on dying. So what you're saying is we need a third person. I, it could, but it, it so emulated what me and my friend went through when we were playing it, because we just kept on dying in certain segments and you know you look over and be like like haha you died and all of a sudden you die and you just start giggling and then you lose control laughing and you have to pause because you just can't go on anymore. And it, Angry Joe's gaming session just so emulated that I couldn't help laugh because that was the right reaction. It's so absurd. You think you're gonna totally kick its ass. And then it just psst, yeah. Battletoads is something that I wish every single side scrolling beat em up would do. It's a thing that the Bloodstained Curse of the Moon games do. And that's that uh, you don't have to be locked to one character. You can switch to mm-hmm. any of them. And I wish double every single Double Dragon game could do that, including Neon. I wish River City Girls would let you do that when you play single player. Um, again, Curse of the Moon and Curse of the Moon 2 do it. When Poe and I played through that game two player, we could switch to any free character we wanted. And that's such a good idea because it lets you have dialogue with all three of them like they're there because mm-hmm. they are. Uh, you're not missing out playing on one over the other. Yep. It's just such a good idea. It's, it's so fun. Yeah, Battletoad seems like a blast. I uh, have it on Game Pass, which has also been just a great deal. So, Well, and Game Pass is such a good value. It's a good value. It's a good value. It's a very affordable way to have access to a lot of games that aren't just nothing. It is, the so, pri- price is going up, though. It is going up. It's still a value. It is. I wish it wasn't going up because, you know, Microsoft is a rich corporation, and I am not a rich corporation, but I'm still going to be paying for it. It's still a value. I still have, like, 
two, two and a half years of my um, $1 upgrade for the um, PC Ultimate nice. version. Nice. When they did that, I, I went and I... It was long after they had originally done it, so I didn't wasn't sure it was going to work. But I went and I bought three years or three one-year subscriptions to gold and then went to just did the one dollar upgrade and mm-hmm. worked great nice uh well there's there's one game that you still haven't brought up which is pocky and rocky oh yeah remember how ngpx fucking sucked yeah and how i on the group chat i don't know if i had mentioned this on our follow-up podcast but on the group chat when Natsume came up, I was secretly hoping that they weren't going to do another Harvest Moon game, that they were going to do a Pocky and Rocky sequel or remake. Yep. Well, guess what the fuck was announced a couple days ago? A new game, a not a remake. New, not even a remake. I thought it was a remake at first, but a new Pocky and Rocky game that looks gorgeous. Yep. And that is coming to the West as a branded Pocky and Rocky game coming in 2021. Pocky and Rocky... If you go look at my YouTube channel, I have a Let's Play up on it. I've always been meaning to redo that Let's Play because it's kind of low quality. One of my favorite shmups on the SNES, one of the most underrated games on that system, on a system of already good games. Incredible music, plays like a dream. There was that one Contra game, I forget what it was called, it had the samurai guy in it, where it it was the overhead view one, where you didn't jump, you just had the slide combat roll game. PlayStation 1, I believe. Yeah, you and I, PlayStation 1 or 2. You and I played through it. Yeah. And uh, part of the reason I loved that game is because it reminded me a lot of Pocky and Rocky in 3D, mind you. But I don't know if Pocky and Rocky is going to have twin stick controls. I don't know if it even should have twin stick controls. But uh, you know that Wild Guns remake? I played the demo of it. Uh, new The new Wild Guns, I should say. I played the demo of it. It played really well. And I went back and revisited the original Wild Guns, which I played a criminally small amount of on the original SNES. It's still just a blast of a game. So, uh, yeah, if Natsume wants to occasionally just go revisit all their old 2D platformers and shit and 2D games and shmups, I am A-OK with this. Because Pocky and Rocky was one of my favorites. Pocky and Rocky 2, not so much. Kind of a worse game. But uh, having a new one that's styled after the first game. Uh, the second game in the series in Japan, the Kiki Kai Kai series. Uh, I am super happy about be nice if they, if they brought one and two to Switch. Yeah, if it came out to that SNES uh, online service, that'd be nice. Even if they released it as as a pack to go along with with the new one. Uh, I guess they could. I recently bought the Castlevania Anniversary Pack on Switch because they never put the Castlevania games on the, on the virtual console there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, it's a nice collection, but it was only twenty five bucks. But still, it has some games that. I wasn't expecting there to be on it, like the Game Boy ones. But you you, you feel like it wasn't a very good purchase, don't you? Uh, there's no lag, as far as I can tell, or very little. Mm-hmm. And everything seems faithful for the two games I played, which was Castlevania 1 and 4. So it doesn't have a 4-3 option without scan lines. Uh, I just go for the Pixel Perfect option, which is the biggest I can blow it up to look good. Yeah. It plays fine. It lets you save state. So it has that. You only get one safe state, unlike the SNES Online's multiples. So, I mean, it, it, it certainly plays fine, and it lets me configure the controls, which SNES Online doesn't let you do. So, I mean, totally no problem there. It's just that I kind of wish it was a little better. Like, the, the title screen shows up. It's got that cool Castlevania 1 artwork, and they're playing the Castlevania 2 rendition of uh, Bloody Tears. And I'm like, man, really? Why don't you play the one from Castlevania 4? Or why don't you play a remix of that, of which you have plenty of? Konami put out the Bare Bones Collection. Uh, yeah. It succeeds by virtue of these being amazing games. It doesn't really it isn't really a good collection. See, and, and, and that's how I felt as well. I didn't buy it, but I've had it in my cart multiple times. Mm-hmm. And every time I've been like, no. I would have it. I'm not going to play through all of them again. And... It's just the games. They didn't do any upgrades or anything else. Like, if that pack had included the 3DS games, it would be a instantaneous buy. Yeah, that would be a nice value. If it had had Symphony of the Night with the stuff that we still have not gotten anywhere but the Sega CD. Saturn. Saturn? Saturn. Okay. Then, instant buy. 
Now, I want to point something out. The Saturn shit is garbage. I don't care. No, no, no. Plus, we got some of it in the PSP version. Great. We got some of it. I want a complete fucking game, finally. Thank you very much. I'll just take a full remake. Speaking of which, there's a yes. guy remaking Symphony of the Night Online in his own custom engine with custom animations that look really good. Remind me to show you his videos after. Uh, I forget his name. Oh, fuck. You I still haven't played played the the most recent Symphony of the Night um, type game. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night? Yeah. I've been playing the Superior Circle no, 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 Curse no, of no, the no, Moon no, no, 1 no. and 2 games. Curse of the Moon 2... You go to the moon, and you cut the moon in half. Great. Look, I, I'm not going to put down the Curse of the Moon games. They are fantastic games. Yes. I, I haven't played Ritual of the Night I, I will play it. I do think that, that you will like how Ritual of the Night upgraded the idea of Symphony of the Night without going quite in the areas that Symphony of the Night kind of... Okay, we got to talk about this now. We're talking about Symphony of the Night, fine. I love Symphony of the Night, but it's overrated. It has tons of empty hallways, and the entire second castle is boring, except for the floating catacombs. That game needs a remake in the worst way, and it needs to make the second castle not suck, and that game is way too easy, and it didn't need a leveling system, because that game would be easy even if you were level 1 with all your equipment. There. There, it's out there. Symphony of the Night is a super overrated game. I love it, though. It's good. Unlike Sonic CD, it's not overrated and bad. It's overrated and good, but it's overrated. There. There. It's out there. No. I... Sling your angry comments my way. Look, Symphony of the Night is honored for what it led to. Sure. The, Me the Metroidvania formula really hit around that. I mean, yes. It captured some imaginations. It, there were no less than five follow-ups. We talk about the DS3, but they actually started on uh, Game Boy Advance. There were actually three games on Game Boy mm -hmm. Advance that had platform. So there's actually six, sorry. Yeah. Because that led to Circle of the Moon, Harmony of Dissonance, Ari of Sorrow. Then on the DS, there's Dawn of Sorrow, Portrait yeah. of Ruin, and Order of Ecclesia. And to a lesser extent, Lament of Innocence and Curse of Darkness, which were three D takes on the Metroidvania formula. There you go. Yeah. So I mean, Metroid and, and Symphony of the Night really did lead to a renaissance. That, or renaissance wouldn't be right because what we're going through right no, now is, is a renaissance. Sort of. We're kind of redoing the Metroidvania thing in a lot of ways. There's Hollow Knight. There's that upcoming Gestalt of Steam and Cinder. Mm -hmm. There's a a ton of Metroidvania ideas. Uh, that all seems super cool. I mean, if it was, if we weren't talking about a company called Konami, we'd be wondering what the hell's going on because you've got you've literally got the game that started the whole thing, and you're not letting the guy who basically made you all the money on that series make another one. Well, no, it wasn't Igarashi who started. Igarashi came out around the Rondo of Blood time. Igarashi has his own style that I don't always appreciate. Empty hallways and big enemies and the less focus on platforming is kind of an ego thing, which to his credit, he remedied a little bit later. Mm. But Symphony of the Night really encapsulates parts of his style I don't like. But he didn't start Castlevania. So no, like, no, no. Let's, let's, be, let's be real here. And that's fine. But he became... He's Castlevania guy. He's the guy you think of when you think of Castlevania. Yeah. You're not wrong there. Yes, he didn't start it, but he... He took it to the point where everybody thinks it was at its best. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, his new game was very well done. And I can't think of um, too many places that were empty like that. I can still think of a couple rooms that were, but there were reasons. Well, in fairness, most of the follow-ups to Symphony of the Night, most of those Castlevania, Metroidvania games, yeah. also address that. Like, Order of Ecclesia is probably the best one. Uh, it addresses a lot of problems. It's not easy, at least to start with. It has tons of personality and character all throughout the game. There's no empty areas. There's no real boring parts of the game, either. And the mechanics of it are fun to boot, so... Yeah. It's just, just weird how we've got indies making all these games that we want, in the styles we want, but the main companies are just like, we don't want anything to do with it. It depends on the company, too. Like, I'm pretty sure a Mega Man 12 announcement is imminent. And Capcom seems to be doing okay for themselves. 
Like, if Capcom suddenly had all Konami's properties, I wouldn't complain. Uh, Konami themselves are the ones that don't give a shit anymore. They just, they think modern gig, the modern game landscape is too risky, so Panchinko Machines it is. And occasionally letting Nintendo use Simon in Smash Brothers, like... Uh-huh. Like, what a joke Konami has become. Remember when Konami was the shit? Yeah. Yeah. Konami had so many good properties, and now they're just konami Like, the worst Konami game on Nintendo for me was Laser Invasion, and it still played fairly well and had incredible music. Don't know that game. Let me rephrase. The worst Konami game was Ninja Turtles 1, but after that it was Laser Invasion. And even then? Even then, Ninja Turtles 1 is hardly bad. It's hardly bad. It's just not... I mean, me. it's not um, LJC. LJN. LJN. It's not LJN. LJN, even LJN had a couple good games. Couple. The Spider-Man <laughs> Venom games. That's yes. literally it. <laughs> That's exactly And even it. then, they weren't stellar. They were just better than garbage. <laughs> Could you imagine if LJN made a comeback and they ended up making good games? Oh, my God. Could you imagine that? No, I can't, actually. You're right. We should end the podcast on that note. Folks, can you imagine LJN coming back and just making incredible games? Tell us what you think. Uh, go to twofatguystalk.com or animeearth.xyz, home of this podcast and Carlos of Anime Earth, and uh, leave us voicemails, leave us comments, leave us things. Tune in next time. Bye.